We've talked previously about the importance of identifying the purpose of your speech in public speaking. We have to identify what it is our, our goal is, what we're there to do, and that will help determine a lot of different things. So there are a variety of different purposes, general purposes that you can identify for a speech. Some of the common ones and, and the ones most commonly used are, uh, for example, to inform or to persuade, to entertain or to commemorate. And again, it's important to identify which of these is going to be the purpose of your speech because it will determine uh, the, the path that you're going to be taking and, and impact so many different choices and, and decisions that you make regarding how you develop the speech, how you deliver the speech and so forth. So today we're going to focus on one uh, of those purposes for a speech, and that is informative speaking. What do we do when we are speaking to inform and what does that mean? And what are some ways that we can do that more effectively? So let me share with you just a few things here on informative speaking. First, when we speak to inform, we are speaking to educate or to enlighten the audience. We are just there to share information. We sort of act as a teacher, kind of like I'm doing here, just sharing information with you about informative speaking. We're not there to push anybody towards specific action or to persuade them to change a behavior or an idea or anything like that. We are simply there to educate and enlighten the audience and share with them uh, some of the wisdom that we have or some of the information that we have. A couple of things that effective informative speakers do regularly and keep in mind is, first of all, informative speakers, if they're going to be effective, need to be as objective as possible. Now, 100% pure objectivity is not really uh, realistic. It's not possible. But as an informative speaker, at the end of my speech, the audience shouldn't know what side I'm on of, of a particular uh, issue or topic or whatever. If I'm, if I'm just sharing information, it's not about my personal beliefs or, or what I think it's about just sharing factual information with the audience. So when we're doing informative speaking, we want to be as objective as possible and keep our own personal opinions and, and thoughts and feelings out of the speech then. We also want to make sure that we're credible. This is true for any speech, but, but for an informative speech, if the audience is going to believe the information that you're sharing with them and you want them to, to take it in and actually, uh, you know, consider it valid, then we need to establish our credibility, make sure we're credible as speakers, make sure we're using credible information and statistics and, and, uh, supporting information like that. So, um, we just want to prioritize credibility in order to be an effective informative speaker. We also want to be knowledgeable and to convey that, that sense of uh, knowledge to the audience that they can be comfortable again and find us to be credible, but we ought to um, share information that is again, credible, that is valid, that is um, relevant, um, that is worthy of the audience's attention and that is new to the audience as we'll talk about, but, uh, but we ought to convey this sense of knowledge and, and present ourselves as knowledgeable to the audience in order to be effective there. And when I'll speak on relevant topics, topics that the audience is going to be interested in or topics that we can uh, generate interest within the audience. Again, if they're, maybe they're not interested at the very beginning, but, but we have uh, the ability to get them interested, but we ought to speak on topics that are relevant to the audience that are going to uh, impact them and, and have specific uh, relevance in their, in their lives. I have just a few tips for you for informative speaking, uh, for being uh, again more effective as a public speaker when you're giving an informative speech. Um, the first one, and we talk about this in introductions and conclusions, uh, but we need to generate and maintain interest in the audience. Uh, and there are a variety of ways we can do this, but we need to, some, some way to hold the audience's attention. So some of the ways that we do this, um, first of all, are to um, demonstrate the intensity. Um, you know, if we, if we have, you know, the, uh, we are drawn and our eye is drawn, our attention is drawn to intense things, bright colors, loud noises, um, interesting information, but, and, and, and drama when there's tension, there's intensity. So we want to try and generate some of that intensity for the audience, not necessarily to scare them or bang pots and pans to make loud noises, but to convey a sense of urgency and intensity with the audience uh, to, to maintain their interest. Novelty is always more interesting to people. And by that, we mean something new. Again, if you're sharing an informative speech on how to tie your shoes, that's not probably going to maintain the audience's interest because most likely they already know how to do that. But we need something that's new, something that's interesting, something that's different that will help generate and maintain interest within the audience. Contrast is always good for, for, maintaining interest. People are interested in what's different. So if we can somehow contrast what we're talking about with something that, that they may already think or may already 
believe or may be different than how they see a particular topic. Again, sharing that contrast can be uh, something that will help generate and maintain interest with the audience. Activity. If we can get an audience kind of participating and not necessarily even up and moving around, but if we can get them you know, participating with some you know, poll questions or even rhetorical questions that get them uh, engaged in the speech and, and help them maintain interest that way, and um, then that can be help and, and be effective in that way. Humor uh, is always a good way to, to maintain the audience's interest if they're if they're getting engaged mentally and they're and kind of their spirit is engaged through humor. They're more likely to, to stay with you and stay engaged and then using visual aids like maybe a PowerPoint or maybe uh, something else can be a good way to maintain interest and, and help the audience uh, stay focused on what you're talking about. So whatever you're going to do, we need to somehow generate and maintain that interest, hold that interest throughout the speech as much as possible. A few other tips for informative speaking. One is organize your speech. Can't emphasize this enough. We had a whole other um, you know, lecture lecture on this or video on this about organizing your speech. It's incredibly important that your speech be organized so that the audience can follow along more easily. They can understand the information more easily. That will help with recall and retention and so forth. Uh, but your speech needs to be organized. Again, that's true for any speech, but informative speeches in particular need to be really well organized. You should use vivid, concrete language in an informative speech. By that, we mean very specific language. Create a very detailed picture for the audience. Don't use uh, ambiguous language or generic words um, that can be interpreted in a variety of ways. Really push an idea home specifically with them to an audience by using that vivid and concrete language. You should also use simple language to a certain extent in an informative speech. If you want the audience to retain this information, and especially if it's new information for them, break it down for them a bit. Don't go overboard on the lingo. Don't use fancy terminology, just especially if it's just to make you sound smart. Use simple language that's that's easier for the audience to digest and to understand immediately. We can use repetition. Again, some of these ideas that I've talked about in this video have come up in others, and but we use repetition to drive ideas home. When when you're giving a speech, for example, you should state your main ideas at least three or four times during the course of that speech, certainly in the preview and the review statements. Again, when you're introducing those uh, main ideas through the transitions and just as much as possible, we want to repeat those main ideas because the audience is then again going to have better recall, better retention, better understanding of what the main ideas are of your speech. So use repetition. Also, you can use repetition, right? Uh, that's a little joke, but we can, you know, again, just to underscore, we can repeat things and have them sink in a little more. Uh, so uh, use that repetition, use it wisely. Don't go overboard, but use repetition um, effectively in an informative speech. You can adapt to feedback. If you see that you're losing the audience, um, then we need to maybe take a right turn here and, and go back or something and, and cover something else. Or, you know, we need to have that flexibility. If we're losing the audience, we need to adapt to that feedback. And likewise, if we see an audience is really interested in one particular area, maybe we expand on that a little bit um, and adapt to that feedback, though, that you're getting from the audience. Pay attention to, to the feedback you're getting from the audience and then um, adapt accordingly um, throughout your speech. And we need to appeal to different learners. People have different learning styles, we have those different learning styles, visual, oral, uh, read and writing and kinesthetic learning styles, uh, just some categorizations, for example, that we use for those. Uh, but whatever, you know, you need to understand that the audience is made up of people with different learning styles. And so we need to um, present information in a way that that connects with each of those learning styles and uh, not just one or, or uh, two of them, but as much as we can um, broadly up, uh, you know, share information that's going to connect to people in different ways with those different learning styles. If you have questions about speaking to inform or giving informative speeches, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to hear from you via email and, uh, and, and chat about this more with you, about how you can become a more effective informative speaker. In the meantime, I hope you'll take these tips and this information and put them to work in your next speech when you're giving an informative speech.